Okay. Ready to go? Yep. <clears throat> Any countdown or anything, or just like? Yeah, just do it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome live to Miami, Florida. We are in beautiful Joe Robbie Stadium for this first round of the AFC playoffs between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins. Both teams have tremendous quarterbacks. Kansas City, the compelling story of Steve DeBerg, and for the Dolphins, the irrepressible one, Danny Marino, destined for the Hall of Fame, another tremendous season with the Dolphins in throwing the football. Great. Want to do another one, or is that it? Yeah, if you want to. Got something else you want to say? I don't know. I just, I just think of that as I was going along. Uh, I'll give you one more thing you have two to choose from. Okay. This might be my big break, see. <clears throat> from 1985 to 1993, well, Kevin everyone. Harlan was the voice of the Kansas City Chiefs. An incredible run by the Nigerian nightmare. Oh, he hit it sacked. Oh, baby, what a play. We had a lot of people that would listen to our broadcast in the stands. And during one of the highlights, I said, oh, baby, what a play. Didn't think anything about it. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, baby, what a play. So my wife and I are listening to the post game show and all the calls. And these people call in, and the host says, hi, you're on the air. Says, hi, we're in the Arrowhead parking lot. Hold on. And I get one, two, three, and they go, oh, baby, what a play. They, they said it, and it kind of became... Uh, and that was that really has been the only time that I've ever had like a phrase, and I would save it for a big play and only use it once again. Touchdown, Kansas City Chiefs! Oh, baby, what a play! It was just like a magical time. That was so fun. The big break he joked about earlier came in 1994, courtesy of someone you might have heard of. We were doing the... AFC Championship game, and I'm walking across the field in Buffalo, and here comes Steve Sable and Carl Peterson, Chiefs General Manager, across the field, and we're going to pass each other. And Carl says, we were just talking about you. And I said, you were? And he entered, this is Steve Sable. Hi, Steve, nice to meet you. And Fox had just gotten the rights to the NFL. And he said, uh, Fox called me, and they wanted to know the top three, in my opinion, the top three radio announcers doing teams in the NFL, and your name was one of the names I gave them. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Kevin Harlan with you, and welcome to the christening of the NFL on Fox. 2021 is Harlan's 36th consecutive season calling NFL games. Happy holidays, everyone. He's called the last 11 Super Bowls for Westwood One Radio. The Lombardi Trophy is going back home to Green Bay. Welcome back to the Superdome in New Orleans. We have had a power outage. Falls caught the ball! What did we just see? Harlan has a long list of memorable calls. And the cat is in the CDW red zone. He's walking to the three. And the cat wouldn't leave the field. And then the Jersey State Troopers come out there, and they're chasing it. He's at the two. The cat runs into the end zone. That is a touchdown. He even once called two games at the same time. Williams digs and turns, corkscrews for six. What a run. If the Chiefs win and New England loses, the Chiefs will be the two seed. I broke CBS protocol. Meanwhile, Miami has first and goal down by four. Here, Butker kicks the extra point. So I was literally doing this. I was watching. It was boom. This was happening. This was happening. And Fitzpatrick throws in the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. The Dolphins have just scored. And when we called that, there was a delay. And as they found out, they all began to jump in unison. And the crowd now knows it. And it was really a perfect sequence. I'm getting confused. What game are you calling? I'm calling both games. <laughs> it seems about right. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, 1977 was the last time I was in this, in this booth. Our high school had a radio station run by the students, a 10 watt radio station. And I tried out and I got the job and that's kind of how I got started. I came up here and did the, the broadcast with another student, but we had to set up the equipment as I did a lot of times. And then, you know, like spotting boards and things like that, I didn't know what I was doing. And I just 
just kept pieces of paper and, and just probably wrote names and numbers. I remember the very first game he ever did, and I, I was very concerned. I, <laughs> I wasn't sure how he would do or how comfortable we would be. But I was surprised at how well it went. And he had the knack for it. Harlan was comfortable in a press box because he grew up in one. His father, who was once the PR director for the St. Louis Baseball Cardinals, was the president and CEO of the Packers for nearly two decades. He would come down springtime with me in spring training. So he was always around sports figures and always involved in the games. And then when he was a ball boy, I know when they gave him a little time off, first thing he did is go to the radio booth and start broadcasting Packer games, <laughs> make believe. The stadium was empty. I, and I could yell and scream as much as I wanted to. I'd shut the door, you know, no one was up there. It was in the middle of the summer in training camp. I said, all right, here's Fran Tarkenton now for the Minnesota Vikings at the 25-yard line. Gets the snap, hands off to Chuck Foreman. You know, I'd do these imaginary games when I was 11, 12, and 13 years old at Lambeau Field. And so that was a pretty cool thing to do. Like his father before him, Kevin also raised his kids at Lambeau Field. Growing up, going to these stadiums, my siblings would always want to go on the field and get a picture and hopefully, you know, see a star player and whatever. I knew very young I wanted to get into broadcasting. Is it on? It's on, my sweetie. So growing up and seeing production trucks, audio booths, producers, directors, how they're having a spotter at a game and throwing stats on the floor, I knew what I was getting into. And what grade are you in? Um, kindergarten. In 2018, Kevin and Olivia became the first ever father-daughter pair to call a regular season NFL game. Of course, it was at Lambeau Field. This is Kevin Harlan along with Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner. Our sideline reporter tonight, Olivia Harlan Decker. And Olivia will join us shortly live from the sideline here at Lambeau. It's so full circle. It, it kind of gives you chills. I think we were both so focused on the game, it didn't resonate at that point. Now here we are three years later, and it certainly does. What is with immense pride that I now send it down to the sideline to our reporter tonight, Olivia Harlan Decker. Dad, thank you, and it's great to get the toss from you like that. That sure <laughs> is a lot of fun. I think when I did that game with my dad, I was nervous just because it was our first time really on air together. So there's that immediate, he can't text me, slow down. He can't text me, visualize periods. He's on the same broadcast. I wanted to nail that game. I wanted to be so good that game because it made our broadcast better because it'd make him proud. You know, you, you serve the listener, you serve the viewer. But in that game, I was, I was working for my dad. <laughs> my dad would say to me, as you go through this business, you're not always gonna be the smartest, the best, the most talented, but what you can control is being the most prepared. He does his own boards, always has. A lot of play-by-play -play announcers don't. And I truly think his, not only preparation for the game, but his approach to the presentation is unmatched. Over the pylon, that is a touchdown! We're probably the only people in Green Bay who every year when the Super Bowl comes up, we turn down the sound on television, we put a radio in the back hallway and listen to Kevin Harlan do the game on Westwood One. An amazing night at home for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Our family business is NFL. <laughs> it's, it's unique, um, but it, it just makes us us, and, and you can tell the pride we carry. I just figured that it was one of those jobs that would give me a chance to kind of you know, fall in the footsteps of my dad, who, um... um fall in the footsteps of my dad, who was, like, so into, you know, running the Packers, and, and, and I, I watched him all the time dealing with writers and broadcasters and players and coaches. And, and I was so lucky to look behind the curtain, so to speak, you know, to see how all this worked. I love the NFL. I was around it growing up, saw everything that anyone could possibly see in the press box, on the field, and at practice. So I feel like I've got the best job in the world.